kinds of debates about how some of the characters are portrayed. But archaeology raises bigger questions about the difference between fact and fiction, as I heard from Michael Scott, my former student. It's very nice to see you, Mary, although the, the early hour does put me slightly in mind of, <clears throat> dare one say, it, about 20 years ago when I used to attend your lectures. <laughs> Don't make me feel so old, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wondered really if you're one of those sort of archaeological professionals who is rather keen on Netflix's The Dig, because quite a lot of archaeologists are. I think it was a brilliant, brilliant film to watch, but it was based on a novel, right? So it was supposed to be a fictional retelling of a great series of events. So it was more interested in the characters and their stories than it was about the objects yeah, that were found. <laughs> you know, kind of, they, they, they get glimpsed at and people go, ooh, gold. But, you know, I mean, for me, that was, that was the, the one missing piece and what makes something like something who stand out so much is that you know this is the richest intact burial that's ever been found in northern Europe. There are Sri Lankan objects that came out of Southern Hood. I mean, these are the, it's that kind of connected ancient world that we should be getting excited about. And for me, was the kind of one really missed element of the film. But what I what struck me is that the borderline between fact and fiction in archaeology is is a particularly edgy one, partly because. Quite a lot of archaeology, dare I say it, is fictional anyway. I mean, people think of it as being that archaeology is a science. I mean, actually, archaeology is partly invention anyway, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I think the analogy with science is actually a really good one because uh, people are also misunderstand quite often the process of science, right? Yeah. People have an idea. And then you go and test that idea and you refine your hypothesis. I think archaeology is very much like that, right? You, you have an idea right, about what might be there. That's why you go dig somewhere in the first place. And we saw that in the film. <laughs> what are they? Would you hazard a guess? Burial mounds, I expect. We're standing in someone's graveyard, I reckon. Viking? Oh, maybe older. But some of the most famous archaeological sites in the world are reconstructed fantasies, aren't they? And that's true of, of even the, the Parthenon. It's been rebuilt at least twice, you know, literally rebuilt. And the Parthenon's a really interesting example, isn't it? Because as you say, it, ha it has had many lives as many different kinds of buildings. And in reconstructing it, they have to choose one of them. The dilemmas are like making a film of an excavation or making a, a historical docudrama, you're always faced with um, the problem of how far is it legitimate to go and whose story we tell. You and know? whose story we tell. You know, we need to, to keep remembering that history is in a constant process of being retold. And that is what history is, retellings of the past. Thank you, Michael. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mary.